Good afternoon. My name is uh, Kohiyama. It has been over 50 years since I've been working with insects. I hope you don't try to figure out how old I am. Biology, habits of insects. All these information are used to find the bug that I am looking for. This is, in a way, communicating with nature through insects. These experiences are the basis of the concept of micropresence. Micropresence are small little creatures. But because they are so small, and its details are so small, you can't tell what it's all truly about. You know that they're there but you don't know what it, its details are about. And visualizing those small creatures is the micro-archiving project. Us humans look at the world through our eyes and our standards. But when you really think about it, there are countless other creatures on Earth. And those small creatures are seeing the world through their own eyes as well, which means that on Earth there are countless of different worlds. And the ones that we're looking at are just one of those countless worlds. Currently, the area, the man-made area is expanding. And I feel that there is a borderline between what's in nature and what's man-made. And so let's refocus on the theme, think like a child. Children do not draw a line between what's man-made and nature. It is said that myriads of gods are present since the ancient times in Japan. Everything has a soul and is communicating with each other. And very interestingly, I feel that the majority of people also still have this understanding. In other words, humans are part of nature, so there is no need to draw a line between what's nature and what's human. And this ancient understanding can be re-understood, and I feel that this can be used to for a new approach. And I think our project is very useful for that. So now I would like to introduce you to the specifics of our project. This is a very small insect. We took a photo of it. And as you can tell, it's not focused right. That is why we have to change focus positions and take 100 or 200 photo, different photos. Then we combine all those photos and then it becomes a focused photo. There are very good softwares right now, but we can't get satisfying results just with those. So in the end, we struggle with the computer and combine the pictures manually to complete our work. And this is my studio or my laboratory. We use a microscope for small insects, and we use a macro lens for small, bigger insects. Everything is automated. So the distance between the insect and the camera can be set accurately. And we make 3D images as well using this technology. So next, I would like to show you our work. First insects that can be found on this campus. This small black dot, this is the eye. <laughs> it's very interesting. It looks like it has eyes on top of its horns. These insects are everywhere around this campus. It is called Ushizura. It lays eggs in the fruits of Japanese snowbells. And then in the fall, I'm sure you have noticed there are a lot of scattered sawtooth oak branches. This is done by this insect. It's called Hairo Chokiri. It lays eggs in acorns of the sawtooth oaks. And after it lays its eggs, it cuts off it, the branches, which is why it is named Chokiri, which means to cut in Japanese. 
This is the shigi zomushi. Its mouth is like that of a snipe, the bird. That is how it got its name. It's a very small insect, but it's very beautiful. It lives in nettle trees. These small things are difficult to find, but when you look very closely, it's, it's truly beautiful. Next is this insect. It's a type of weevil. And it's very, they all have very interesting faces. And I feel that it resembled someone that I know. That's what makes it even more interesting, and that's why I like them so much. They are found in dead wood. And I found them, I, you can find them um, in the back of the guest house as well. Now, what do you think this is? What does it look like? It's bug feces. For bugs, the number, its number one enemies are birds. And to protect itself, this is why this, bugs look, this bug looks like uh, bug feces. It's very small. And it's called mushikso hamushi. It's a leaf beetle. And it literally means bug feces. So there are diverse and wonderful different kinds of insects around the campus. Another thing that I want to introduce is that these bugs have been around for 100 million years. The next bug came from overseas. Maybe you've seen it from the pictures outside, but it has a very long neck. And the, it's only the males that have these long necks, and it has been said that their necks have gotten longer to find the females. No one knows for sure, though. They're very small, and they can be found in the Philippines. Next bug can be related to the bird, Saicho. And so it is named Saicho Moroki. I named it, actually. And it has like a mustache characteristic. It has a very sturdy body. And the next insect is called a jewel or a gem. It's shiny like a jewel or a gem. And these are found in the tropics. And these bright colored insects are often found in the tropics. The next bug is also very interesting. It has a similar structure. And it's difficult to understand why it is shaped like this. This bug can be found in Madagascar. And as you may know, Madagascar has several different unique kinds of creatures. These are one of the bigger types of insects. This is the next bug. I went to Laos before, and I found this there. It has a lot of needles. I'm pretty sure that birds would have a difficult time eating this. These insects can be found in Japan as well, but their needles aren't that long. Next, I would like to show you my work in 3D. This insect is found in Africa. We've made a 3D model from the images. And the movement is imitated from the motion capture images. Next bug is an insect that can be found in Papua New Guinea. Insects have four wings. And for the, the two wings are used for protection, and the bottom two wings are used for flying. So it looks like they're doing like a bonsai form. I believe it looks quite cute. <laughs> Next, I would like to my CT scan works. 
This is the fruit of the Japanese Nobel. Egonaga Higezomushi, the first weevil I introduced, shows, lays eggs in the, the seeds. In July, the eggs become a larvae. And then in August, they grow in that seed, and they're basically adults. And then by late August, they come out of the seed. Then the following year, the female would lay its eggs in the fruits again, and the same, then the cycle continues. Lastly, I would like to mention one more thing. Think like a child. Please do not differentiate and draw a line between what's man-made in nature. And please look at insects closely. This way, I think you will be able to find a new approach between the connection between humans and nature. Thank you very much.